Thou Signy sent the children of her and Sigir to Sigmund. Now when as Sigmund is loosed and the stalks are broken, he dwells in the woods and holds himself there. But Signy sends yet again to Walt of the tidings. Whether Sigmund were alive or no, but when those who were sent came to him, he told them all as if it had betided, and how things had gone betwixt him and the wolf. So they went home and tell Signy the tidings, but she goes and finds her brother. And they take counsel in such wise as to make a house underground in the wild wood. And so things go on a while, Signy hiding him there and sending him such things as he needed. But King Sigir deemed that all the Volsangs were dead. Now Sigir had two sons by his wife, whereof it is told that when the eldest was ten winters old, Signy sends him to Sigmund, so that when he might give him help, if he would in any wise strive to avenge his father. So the youngling goes to the wood and comes late in evening tide to Sigmund's earth house, and Sigmund welcomed him in seemly fashion, and said that he should make ready their bed. But I, said he, will go seek firewood. Therewith he gives the meal bag into the hands while he himself went to fetch firing. But when he came back, the youngling had done naught at the bread making. Then asked Sigmunds if the bread be ready. Says the youngling, I durst not set hand to the meal sack because somewhat quick lay in the meal. Now Sigmund deemed he bolted that the lad was of no such heart as that he would be fain to have him for his fellow. And when he met his sister, Sigmund said that he had come no nigher to the aid of a man, though the youngling were with him. Then said Signy, Take him out and kill him, for why should an one live longer? And even so he did. So the winter wears, and the next winter Signy sent her next son to Sigmund. And there is no need to make a long tale thereof, for in likewise went all things, and he slew the child by the counsel of Signy. Of the birth of Sinjotli, the son of Sigmund. So on a tide it befell, as Signy sat in her bower, that there came to her a witch wife, exceeding cunning, and Signy talked with her in such wise, fain am I says she, that we should change semblances together. She says, Even as thou wilt then. And so, by her wiles, she brought it about that they changed semblances. And now the witch wife sits in Signy's place, according to her read goes to bed by the king that night, and he knows not that he has other than Signy beside him. But the tale tells of Signy 
that she fared to the earth house of her brother, and prayed him give her harbor for the night. For I have gone astray abroad in the woods, and know not whither I am going. So he said she might abide, and that he would not refuse harbor to one lone woman deeming that she would scarce pay back his good cheer by tail-bearing. So she came into the house, and they sat down to meet, and his eyes were often on her. And a goodly and fair woman she seemed to him, but when they are full, then he says to her that he is right fain that they should have but one bed that night. She nowise turned away therefrom, and so for three nights together he laid her in bed by him. Thereafter she fared home, and found the witch wife, and bade her change semblances again, and she did so. Now, as time wears, Signy brings forth a man-child, who is named Sinfjotli. And when he grew, he was both big and strong, and fair of face, and much like unto the kin of the Volsungs. And he was hardly yet ten winters, when she sent him to Sigmund's earth house, but this trial she had made of her other sons, or ever she had sent them to Sigmund, that she had sewed gloves onto his hands through flesh and skin. And they had borne it all and cried out thereof. And this she now did to Sinfjotli. And he changed countenance in no wise thereat. Then she flayed off the kirtle, so that the skin came off with the sleeves, and said that this would be torment enough for him. But he said, Full little would Bolsung have felt such a smart as this. So the lad came to Sigmund. And Sigmund bade him knead their meal up, while he goes to fetch firing. So gave him the meal sack, and then went after the wood. And by then he came back, had Sinfjotli made an end of his baking. Then asked Sigmund if he had found nothing in the meal. I misdoubted me that there was something quick in the meal when I first felt to kneading it. But I have kneaded it all up together, both meal and that which was therein, whatsoever it was. Then Sigmund laughed out. He said, Not wilt thou eat of this bread tonight, for the most deadly of worms hast thou kneaded up therewith. Now Sigmund was so mighty a man that he might eat venom and have no hurt thereof, but Sinfjotli might abide whatso venom came on the outside of him, but might neither eat nor drink thereof.